So uh, here's what happens in movements. We, we've got this model. Um, first, you get transitional. Let me just draw this. Transitional cells, um, and like this, you know, they're like this. So let me draw the let me draw the naive naive cells. You gate on uh, IgD and CD27, which CD27, which is memory marker. You know, so you get these cells and these cells. So it, it kind of looks like this, and groups of populations of cells, and as they, they develop like this. So the naive are down here, and they become you know they express IgD, and then as they become more and more activated, they come over here and get to get the memory uh, B cells, CD27. Right. And even the IgD, CD38, 38, something else here, they, they, they could be gated, I think it's 24, and something else, and they can even be gated like this. So you get your transitional, and then they develop into this population, and this is if you gate on that. You know, you gate on the IgD high, CD27 low, you gate on that, you get the naive cells, and among, um, the population of naive cells are transitional. So, so why is this important? Why is this progression from transitional to here to naive to up like this important? Because in lupus, there's two things. Transitional cells have a problem right here with becoming, say, more. I'm, I'm, I don't know if they're activated, but let's just say they are. They're activated a little bit. But really, the key thing in lupus is these the naive become activated and naive. So, and then they become, they go off and become plasma glass to produce all the antibodies. So here is a naive cell, this cell right here, or this cell right here. This is naive, and what we call it is resting naive, N-A-B, right? The resting naive B cell. Uh, and uh, that's what it should be in, uh, normal, in normal people in humans. Now, what this means, what this really, if they're resting naive, what it means is they have been selected. So what I didn't say so far is these, to get to be a transitional B cell, they have to select on a repertoire of self. So they're, of course they're self-reactive because that's how they got to this stage. They selected on self antigen because uh, Cambier showed that this stage, in, at least in mice, you can't do this in humans, but if you gate, on Ig IgM IgM and CD23. This is in mice. CD23. What happens is if T1 is here. They're IgM high, and then T2 is here. T2, and then they downregulate IgM and become energic. There's a population here. This is what's stop. This energic population is also resting naive. So so they cannot re react. You know they should not react and unless under some circumstance, and they should and they if they do react they're all auto reactive because that's how they're selected. So getting back up here, the resting naive or here in lupus there's a little bit of a problem. Did you say Paul? There's a little bit of a problem with this resting naive, and I think they migrate into becoming activated, activated naive. Right? Okay, they're activated naive. And what does this mean? Somebody showed this a long time ago in lupus patients with activated naive cells. And they have like a, a HLA, uh, but let's just say MHC, class 2 MHC. They have certain activated markers like IL-2 receptor and other things. I think CD38 is actually from 38. So there's activation markers. And before this is a transitional cell, transitional, that went to the resting naive. So there's this step, these steps. And from here, they go to making plasma blasts. Plasma blasts that make autoantibodies. Here's the latest thing that we, we, we observe, that you would and so forth, you know, observe this, is this whole scheme of event depends on two, uh, two or three key cytokines. One is type one interferon. Type one interferon can cause a little tolerance loss here, or loss of selection, and lead to activated. I guess we showed they were both um, activated, and uh, they don't, and they and they actually escape clonal deletion. You know, so they're activated and they persist. That's going from transitional to this resting naive. 
going from resting naive to activated naive, which is a very important step because there they're losing their um, there they're losing their energy. They're becoming a, they should be energetic, but they're not. They lose energy. In order to do that, what the most recent paper in humans showed, and we showed in mice, that they need a cytokine. They need you know they need a few things like TLR signaling, but they need a cytokine. The cytokine is interfering gamma. And then they upregulate, this is the thing about the activating need, they upregulate T beta in humans. They upregulate that transcription factor. And then these guys start and so that's activating naive, not resting naive, but activating naive. And then there's another one here. But going into a plasma blast, a pre-plasma blast, they also have T bet and maybe they have start to make limp one. Limp one. Okay, so there's this progression of transcription factors. Here's where IL-17 receptor comes in. You know, we're waiting for this. Mm -hmm. IL-17 receptor, IL-4. IL-17 receptor uh, is necessary. See, a lot of these are in FFB. IL-17 receptor signaling, uh, let's say this, the lack of IL-17, if you don't have IL-17 receptor, what happens is you have a strong energic signal. This is no IL-17 receptor. You don't have IL-17 receptor. You don't. You won't get this far. This TLR7 can't signal. We showed that. Probably interfering gamma can't signal. I'm not sure we showed that. They cannot go from resting to naive. So this is blocked. The no IL-17 receptor. In other words, it's a it's a dominant repressive effect on the chromatin. And all these things that occur all the way up to here require sort of a chromatin to be not repressed. But no IL-17 receptor will, uh, if, it ha if it lacks this, the chromatin will be, uh, will, be re will be repressed. The other thing is we know that if you have IL-4 receptor, IL-4 receptor, IL-4 receptor, also, then that's a positive thing. Signaling to that will also repress the chromatin. So these two things we can go together in, in, in type of interference. So they actually those three things come together to probably make the chromatin more accessible and more responsive to this sort of a loss of tolerance. So the, so the thing, the question we have for the IL-17 receptor to knock out B cells, we think it's an intrinsic B cell effect. That was important for this grant too, remember, because we wanted to show uh, that when you affect things, you could affect T regs, you know, if you put IL-4 and no dose IL-2, it may make T, T regs over here. T regs, and T regs could come up, and they could, they could turn off the TH, TFH1s and so forth, you know, the interfering gamma, or the TFH17s, which make this. You know, so we got this problem here, I'll just put that. T regs, and then TFH, TFH17, that are making that, or TFH gamma, which is making that. And the T regs could affect, that was with the low dose IL-2. But we're, we're sort of not looking into that that much now. But you know, we know that these cytokines are the key things that cause this. Other, but, but other cytokines, so, but without IL-17, or with IL-4, or maybe without type of interferon, there's a lot of repression going on in chromatin. So the thing is, ATXC is one possibility is look at ATXC and look at repressed chromatin marks, you know, that, that that can do that. But we know something about this. We know we know something about this. Like IL-17 receptor signals through NFKB in this high P50. Remember that? So P50 being high is something. So I don't know what to do, whether to focus on P50. The other thing is IL-4 receptor turns on a, a transcription factor. Uh, probably Bach 2 yeah Bach 2 so there's all these different transcription factors that may be repressing Bach 2 is a repressor you know this is Bach 2 mm. Bach 2 is a chromatin repressor it P50 this is P50 homodimers is a P50 homodimer that's a chromatin repressor and I don't know what type of interferon does but you know you know probably the absence of IRFs Mm. Maybe IRF8, IRF4, you know, ratio of right. IRF8 is too high, and that's a chromatin repressor. Mm. So all these chromatin repressors are there, 
We don't know which ones they are and whether it'll be easy to do the uh, ATXC. So what we're thinking of first, right, is trim, uh, the transcriptome. Maybe the way to approach this problem with the ionosephalus and receptors is to get the transcriptome and look at key points in the transcriptome. And maybe the key point is here. You know, you, we can sort on these, resting on you because they have um, certain chemokine receptor markers and so forth. We can we can sort on resting naive or activated naive, right? Mm -hmm. So we can sort on these two populations, and maybe we can sort on the preplasma blasts, the ones that are going down here, and and then take those three in the seventeen receptor knockout compared to wild kind. I think we should do some. Just facts, something else oh, first. Yeah, yeah. Before. So yeah, first is just good pairs. Right. So we're, so we're going to do it already for this IL-4 uh, low-dose IL-2 problem. And mm -hmm. we can do it at the same same time with the IL-17 receptor knockout problem. We can just, you mm -hmm. know, we, instead of doing sorting, we can use the, you know, the oligochondry antibodies, stain the cell same time. And the sequence, you know, we just need to buy the antibody. Well, that is something because the other thing is if we can find a good market. I mean, I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy all the antibodies and do this and do the advanced analysis because they haven't even done that. There's the antibodies that define the different stages, all the different stages in, in, I guess, in mouse. And the other thing was to do what you were just saying, uh, the site seek because. IL-17 receptor expression is critical, but you know you, it's black and white in your case, I guess. You know, it's either there or not there, right? IL-17 receptor. But the interferon gamma receptor is critical. IL-4 receptor is critical. This can be seen by fats pretty easy. But the interferon gamma receptor, which signals Tibet and so forth, it can't be seen very well. And there's a few other ones that can't be seen. But so there's so I guess it, okay. So here's the, here's the plan. Fats. You know, so we do the facts on this to investigate this this uh, sort of sequence of events in different mice. And I guess the different mice would be uh, the IL-17 receptor knockout or mice treated with IL-4 IL or, yeah, IL-4 plus other <coughs> IL-2. Or maybe that'll be in humans. So we've got to get humans versus mice. Or maybe we should do humans with IL-17 receptor. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, same time. Mouse, we have to do mouse for sure. Do so. mouse and humans. Mm -hmm. But do close cytometry and, and we'll develop panels to look at each of these intracellular and surface markers. And then uh, and then after that, well, you know, eventually we'll get the timing right. And then we'll do the, then at the right time point, at the right developmental stage, we'll do the transcriptome. And then after that, at the right time, maybe then do, um, you know, like, um, you know, the V-taxi. Yeah, the ATAC, see. something like that. So this is the this is the first step, and sorting, and then it could be in bulk or something first, and then single cell. Okay. I just thought that's fresh in our mind, right? So the the naive the.